Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be attempting to restore this iPhone 8 Plus that I got for free after it was thrown at a shipping container by its previous owner. They told me they threw it because they weren't able to change the brightness of the LED flash in control center. I also heard that it had a screen replacement only weeks beforehand. The frame is snapped off at the top of the iPhone and the screen is separating from the frame. The whole frame of the phone also appears to be twisted and even as a result of all this damage that's occurred to this iPhone, the camera lens and home button appear uncracked. Although I'm not actually sure whether the home button is functioning just yet, so I'll need to take a look at that later on. But first things first, let's see if this phone shows any signs of life. I connected up the charger and nothing appeared on the display. Although after a few minutes, it did vibrate and the home button appeared to be clicking and the device appeared to be vibrating. So with that happening, I have a good feeling that the display is just dead. So to test my theory, I'll need to remove the old display and connect up a brand new one just to test out the phone to see if it actually boots to the lock screen. With the screen off, we can actually see the damage inside of the phone. It's filled with dirt and what appears to be pieces of grass. There also is an antenna snapped off up at the top there. But before I attach a new display, I'm going to disconnect some of the stuff from the top of the phone. Firstly, I'm going to remove the camera and take a look at that. As you can see, it doesn't appear to be damaged in any way. The connectors all seem fine, so I'm going to put that in a Ziploc bag so I can make sure that doesn't get damaged. Next, I can remove this little antenna up top here, which will get me better access at the logic board. And I'm just going to remove a few of these screws just to remove any tension that might be on the logic board. With that now done, I can get the replacement display install it roughly on the phone, pressing and holding the power button, I got no signs of life, but connecting up a charger and holding the power button again, the phone showed the Apple logo and to my surprise, booted to the lock screen. Now I had the owner come around and restore the backup from this phone to the new iPhone XS Max, and then they reset the phone and I could set it up as new, and you can see it's a 64 gigabyte model on iOS 12.1.2. Now that I know the phone is working, I can begin restoring it to brand new condition. The first thing I'll need to do is remove the logic board from the phone, as that's the biggest part and will need to come out first. With that removed, I can begin removing all of the smaller components inside of the phone. Now because I'll need to do a full housing swap on this iPhone 8 Plus, I'll need to remove every single screw and every single component from the phone which I'll transfer across to the new housing. I will also need to remove the Taptic engine before I remove the battery from the iPhone as this will give enough clearance to hopefully remove the battery tabs without breaking them off, which otherwise would require me to pry up the battery with force. These tabs are very strong and honestly are quite a poor design choice for holding in a battery. Unfortunately, a few tabs broke, but I was able to retrieve them with my tweezers and remove them fully. I have noticed with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus models, these battery adhesive tabs are really strong compared to say the iPhone 6 and 6S. However, with these 8 Plus battery adhesive tabs, because there's four of them, if you break one, it makes it much easier to pry up the battery. Next, I can move along to the dock connector. I will actually be replacing the dock connector with a new one, just because I had one around, but I'll also need to remove it first so I can get off these grill pieces and also the white waterproofing gasket that goes around the end of the lightning connector. After I complete that, I can move along to the power button and volume flex cable, which is fastened to the phone with a few screws and the cable is adhered to the back panel of the iPhone, so I'll need to be careful when removing that so I don't rip or damage that cable. With that removed, I can move along to a few of these brackets which are located on the side of the iPhone 8 housing. These brackets are clips for the display to attach to the iPhone. After that, I could use a heat gun to heat the back of the iPhone so I could remove the wireless charging coil. Lastly, I can remove these little metal clips from the back of the volume and power buttons. 
With that now done, the iPhone is completely empty and we have an abundance of parts on my desk. So it's time to reassemble this iPhone with a new housing. This housing cost me around 35 Australian dollars and it's complete with a new frame and back glass which is needed for this iPhone. I'll start by inserting the power and volume buttons and these little metal clips which go on the back of them. Then I can begin with all of the smaller parts which will need to go on before I install the bigger ones. These include the clips for the display and the dock connector which I'll put in next. And for those wondering what replaced the headphone jack, it appears to be just this little piece of plastic that I don't see has a whole lot of function. With the dock connector and smaller components installed like the Taptic engine, I can remove the plastic film and adhere down the dock connector. I can then install the loudspeaker on top of that and its appropriate screws and antenna cable. There's a few more smaller metal brackets I'll need to install and I can't forget these little metal clip things that we took off from the old volume and power buttons which I'll need to install on the new ones. This just helps with the clicky feel on the buttons of the iPhone. I'll also be changing across the mute switch with a new one as the old one has some marks in it and installing a new one will make everything look brand new like it came out of the factory. I can install the appropriate screws for both the volume and power button brackets and testing out making sure all the buttons are working as well as the mute switch I can continue on with the restoration. I can't forget this little piece of plastic which helps eject the sim tray and the little bracket for the LED flash and microphone. With those installed I can move across to the old display where I can remove the irreplaceable home button as I like to call it and taking a look at it, it appears not to have any damage other than a few minor scratches on the outer ring. I can install it in the new refurbished display, connecting it up and installing its bracket and trialing screws. It should also be noted that this home button is not user replaceable as it's paired to each iPhone. So if it was broken, I would have to resort to a Bluetooth button or pay Apple $278.95 for them to do a full screen replacement on the phone, which then they would pair a new home button. Either way though, the home button in this works, so I don't have to worry about that at all. I can move across the earpiece and front camera and the new display is prepped and ready to go. I can install a new antenna up the top here which was previously broken on the old housing after it became snapped up the top. I can install the dual cameras and a new wireless charging coil as I damaged the old one in the removal process. I highly recommend buying a new wireless charging coil if you do a housing swap on an 8 or 8 plus because they are extremely fragile and you're almost guaranteed to break it in the removal process. And finally it's time to reinstall the logic board back into the iPhone frame and things are now starting to look like a phone again. I can install the Wi-Fi antenna back up into the top left corner of the iPhone, but unfortunately I missed a standoff screw which I couldn't access with this little antenna here, so I had to remove the antenna itself and the camera bracket to be able to access that, but with a few screws everything was good to go. I can install the last few screws holding in the logic board and a couple of brackets, give the inside a bit of a clean and it was time to prep the phone for a new battery. And you can see here how the battery adhesive tabs actually go around the wireless charging coil so when you remove the battery you don't rip up the wireless charging coil. Now that I've placed the battery into the iPhone I can finally install the water resistant gasket which will help stop water and dust from entering the inside of the iPhone. Now to make the display installation a little bit easier, I only removed one half of the plastic film for the waterproofing gasket. The reason for this is it allows me to be able to connect up the display and install the brackets without getting the gasket in the way and becoming stuck on the display before I install it and seal it down. With the cables and connectors installed, I can seal down the display and install the two pentalobe screws in the bottom 
and remove the plastic films from both the back and front and install a tempered glass screen protector. And we're done. So this is it, the free iPhone 8 Plus, which was completely catastrophically damaged, has now been restored to brand new condition with a new display, new back, new battery, dock connector, and a few other small components. This iPhone 8 Plus cost me a total of 139 Australian dollars. To put that into perspective, Apple is still selling this iPhone brand new for 1,149 Australian dollars. And if you calculate that, that is a saving of $1,010. That is insane. So this has been an excellent deal for me and everything on the phone is fully functioning, including the home button and rear facing cameras. For those wondering, yes, the battery health shows up at 100% in settings. And just to confirm, this is a 64 gig unit on 12.1.2. However, there is one issue I can't fix, and that is the true tone function. As you can see, the iPhone 10 on the left has an option in display and brightness for true tone, and that option is completely missing from the 8 Plus. Now that is because the display has been replaced and the phone knows it isn't the original screen. To fix this, I would need to transfer the data across from the old panel to the new one. The only issue being, I don't have the original display for this iPhone as the one that was on it when I received the phone was a replacement screen. So this is a small defect, but either way, for the price of the iPhone, I'm not going to worry. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.